Yes. It's the start of a brand new Andrew Championship drag racing season with new hopes and new dreams of grabbing the trophy that everyone wants in the sport, that precious gold Andrew Christmas tree. The season opening AC Delco East Coast Nationals at Western Sydney International Dragway represents a fresh start and a new page turn in pursuit of drag racing glory. Past failures are forgotten, reputations don't count for anything. And prior victories are counted for naught as the country's best drag racers wage brutal side-by-side -side racing warfare. On today's program, the Andrew Championship drag racing tale continues with top door slammer and top bike. Welcome to the most brutal motorsport on the planet. It's Andrew Championship Drag Racing here at Western Sydney International Dragway. It's part of the AC Delco East Coast Nationals. My name is Dean Neal. Joining me in commentary this weekend is Rob Oberg. Top door slammer, Rob. 20-plus cars. We're going to try and squish them somehow into an eight-car field and top bike. What about that particular category? Well, both categories. I mean, it's the opening round of the Australian Championship. All the guys are on level playing field at the moment, but... They want to get their championship chase off to a good start. Defending champion Gary Phillips here, he's going to be taking on the big names like Victor and Ben Bray, Brett Stevens, the five-second man, John Zapier. As you say, 20-plus cars. Only the top eight after qualifying get to contest racing tomorrow. And, of course, top fuel bike. These bikes cover the quarter mile in six seconds, reaching speeds of over 200 mile an hour. On two wheels, they're the bravest men in motorsport for my money. This arm wrestle is going to be so brutal, you're going to be sore watching this. Welcome to Andrew Championship Drag Racing. It's fair to say that Victor Bray is truly the spiritual father of top door slammer drag racing. From Wild Bunch Beginnings, the driver of the Castro Edge 57 Chef is a six-time Andrew top door slammer champion and has an imposing 17 wins from 34 final rounds in the bracket solidifying the Queenslander as an Australian motorsport icon. However, things did not go Bray's way last season with setbacks of plenty for the team. Last year we had a bit of a uh, bit of a downside. Benny had a bit of an accident and hurt his back and was out of racing for a while. And of course that affected the team. Give us some advantages too because they had extra crew guys and Benny to work on my car once he was able to get around. But um, no, no, it was just a competition level of top door slammers getting so hard nowadays, so tough. There's so many fast cars out there that you've got to really try and keep up with it as you go along. You've always been regarded as an innovator. Uh, what have you done with the Castrol uh, Edge 57 Chev in the off-season for this year? Any significant changes? Well, I, I was working on a tune-up last season, and towards the end of the season, uh, I, I, I hadn't really tried a lot at, on race day, and then I had to race John Zapier at the Winter Nationals. OK, so uh, I put it in for that, and I went to 6.04, saw some real promising results. So obviously we bring that tune-up to the start of the season, but this year uh, went in 07 and 01, so we're still seeing some good results. I'm going to try and work on that combination and see if I can you know, bring it up to, up to speed and sort of try and see if we can take the fight up to John Zappi with that. And uh, obviously we're going to move it into the Monaro and uh, try and use that technology in the funny cars as well. It'll just be invigorating the whole sport, you know. I mean, it's, it's growing fast, the competition level's growing. And uh, look, I love winners more than the best bloke, you know, and uh, you know, I just love the competition level that we've got out there now and Top Door Slam is just exploding into something that I never thought it would be in my career. So it's great to be a part of it and I want to be a part of the top end of the field. Here we are, the AC Delco East Coast Nationals. This man's a top alcoholic. He also races a top fuel motorcycle and he's pretty reasonable in a door slammer as well. Brett Stevens, looking forward to another drag racing season. Yeah, mate, you know, it's a good start to the year and uh, the weather's looking after us, so um, and I've got all three of mine in the, in the field, so I feel a bit lucky today. Brett Stevens has progressively developed from a single-minded motorcycle-based drag racer to the head of a multifaceted professional drag racing organisation. The, the one that really sticks out in my mind as my biggest achievement is to have 40 guys under severe pressure at a race meeting and all get on well without any fighting and carrying on or anyone like. That's a major achievement for me and um, I'm very proud of that. And we do pretty well at the racing as well. 
a lot of people have that to say that, you know, Brett Stevens is a big bad guy out there that's got a, you know, fiery temper and aggro and, and whatever. Yeah, you know, I get wound up at a race meeting and that, that's, that's the, the, the drive for me to win. You know, the adrenaline gets pumping, it starts a week before a race and, yeah, I, I, I run hard, I go there to do what I do and do it 110%. Um, when, when people do get close to me and there's not that many, they, they go, oh, you're not that guy anymore, you know. Like, sometimes I need to get out of this, the race world, but it's not very often that I do get to kick back and do that, but when I do, I enjoy myself. He's carrying the number one finally on top door slammer, Gary Phillips. You must be delighted with that accomplishment. Oh yeah, it was, it was a hard road and um, a lot of runner-ups and a average good average points and yeah no, we, we tried last year it's a tough bracket to win and you know to add that to the resume is, uh, yeah it felt good without the support of lucas oil products has been with me this is the 10th year i couldn't compete at the level with one car let alone two uh it's just financially um not viable trying to do it out of your own pocket and you need some really good sponsors and unfortunately sponsors want to see winners you know to come back and and win it this year um it's, it's sort of good. I can you can feel proud picking the phone up and talking to him and saying, "Hey, you know, we won," because that's what America's all about. You know, the the whole deal is it doesn't matter whether you miss out by one point or two points. Second doesn't count. You know, any win's good. I try not to look back if I can help it. I try and look forward because you know it's past tense. It's history. But the level of performance with all the other guys, the way they run their cars and all that stuff, that's what makes it an exciting bracket. It's exciting because. There, it is a challenge to be the, to one of the top eight. Don't go anywhere because coming up shortly we go Andrew Championship Drag Racing with Top Bike.